today we are going to be going over the donning procedures for an off-the-shelf DeRoyal TLSO, which is what I have in my hands here. Before we get started, just to review some of the parts of the brace, this is going to be what we call the sternal shield or a chest piece that's going to rest on top of the patient's chest. So this is the front of the brace. You're going to see the writing on here is going to be face up. So this is the top of the brace and this is the bottom of the brace. It is attached by four elastic straps on the abdominal portion of the brace, connecting it to the back panel. All right, the, this portion of the brace has shoulder straps that go over top of the shoulders. So you see it goes over like a backpack in the back. Some of the braces will have under the shoulder straps, which would not have this extension piece in the back, but that would be specified on the instructions that you are given. So this is the back portion of the brace, this is the bottom, and this is the top. The over the shoulder straps connect to the chest piece, and the under the shoulder straps would also connect to the chest piece. So when you're removing the brace to get ready to take it off, it's easiest to do this by loosening the four straps and sticking them to the Velcro panel on the side. Do this for both sides and then remove the side Velcro panels to separate the brace into two pieces. You will also need to undo the shoulder straps as well. By laying the straps over top of the Velcro, you'll prevent the Velcro from sticking to itself when you have the brace fully apart. So then you have the back piece and the front piece. So this technique that we're going to be using is called the log roll technique. So this technique requires a separate person to be putting it on the patient. This is for patients that are under strict spinal precautions that cannot get up or sit up at all without the brace on. So we're going to be applying it to this patient here lying on the bed using that technique. So the first step is going to be for her to log roll. She's going to log roll away from me so I can get a view of her back. The landmarks that I'm looking for are going to be the tailbone at the bottom here. So I'm going to feel down along her back to the top of the buttocks area. That's going to be where I want to line up the bottom edge of the brace. I'm going to first slide the Velcro panel underneath her. At the waist level is going to be the easiest place to slide this underneath. I'm going to line up the brace with the tailbone. You'll notice that the curve of the back panel should be fitting into the natural curve of her spine as well. I'm going to also tuck these straps over top of her shoulders so I can get to them easily afterwards. If you have the under the shoulder straps, you can tuck them just under the arms there. Once I have it positioned in place, I'm going to help hold it there while she rolls back towards me to lie flat on her back again. I'm going to feel on either side of her to make sure that this is centered underneath her. If it's not, it may be required that she roll towards me and you push it out slightly towards the other side but hers feels pretty well centered, so I can go ahead and apply the front portion of the brace. The front portion of the brace is going to be different anatomically for everyone, but typically the bottom edge is going to be very close to the hip bones, and the top edge is going to be just under the chest area, so the brace is coming right across the rib cage. Another thing to note is the indentation in the side panel. That apex of that indentation is usually going to fall right at the patient's natural waistline, which is right between the rib cage and the hip bones in that soft area there. So I'm going to get this centered across her front and ease it on either side. This Velcro side panel is going to get attached to this long piece right here. It's not going to get pulled across to the front of the brace like this. It's going to lie just on the side and I'm going to line up the one on the other side the same way. Then you're going to pull the elastic straps nice and snug. You can have the patient take a deep breath 
before you pull, so that way you make sure she can still breathe comfortably. You're going to want to do the bottom straps first, and then you're going to want to do the top straps. This will ensure that you capture the patient's belly if you need to. You don't want to do the left straps first and then the right side straps. You want to go from bottom to top instead. Otherwise, the brace might not be even on both sides. Once this is in place, then you're going to have to come for the shoulder straps. They're going to get attached to the metal rings on the chest piece. These do not need to be pulled as snug as the abdominal straps do. I'm going to adjust my Velcro here. And I usually put one hand underneath the strap and pull it tight over my hand just to give a little bit of extra slack in there. If you pull those straps too tight, it's going to pull the whole brace and cause it to ride up on the patient. All right. Once that is set, we can have the patient sit up. One thing to note here is with the chest piece on this brace, you want it to be sitting about two or three fingers width from the patient's sternal notch. That is that where the chest bone ends and the soft part of the neck can be felt. So you want a good amount of distance there. Now, if the patient is slouched or has a very hunched posture, you'll notice when Audrey slouches, it's going to come very close to their neck. So it's important if you notice it fitting like this that you remind the patient to try to stand up tall and straighten out their back and you'll see how that pulls away. This is meant as a reminder to try to keep the spine in alignment. They should have enough clearance across their thighs to be able to sit like this comfortably without the whole brace riding up. But that's the most common issue that we have with this brace is that it may ride up over time. If that happens, it may be possible or it may be necessary for you to loosen the straps across the main portion of the brace and pull it down slightly since it's going to have a tendency to ride up over time. Your practitioner should have provided you with a set of written wear and care instructions. If you no longer have these and would like an extra set, please contact our office. If you're having any additional questions that weren't answered by the videos today, please feel free to contact our office as well, and we're more than happy to set up a Skype appointment with you or get you into one of our multiple office locations to be seen by a certified practitioner.